All right, we are in section 2.7, where we are going to prove angle pair relationships. So throughout this section, we have uh, a few uh, theorems that we're going to take a look at. And uh, I don't have a list of them per se, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of use those theorems uh, incorporations with the different proofs that we're going to take a look at and uh, they're going to be kind of scattered throughout the notes so I'll, I'll identify them and what they are and then how we can utilize them uh, in a proof uh, for each different situation so looking at this first one we have uh, theorem 2.3 which is the right angles congruency theorem uh, the right angle congruency theorem states that all right angles are congruent. So how is that going to help us? So if we look at this proof here, we have this diagram shown to our right and it says that the given value is JK is perpendicular to KL and ML is perpendicular to KL. So what we want to prove is that angle K is congruent to angle L. So looking at the first statement, it's the given statement above so that's our reasoning for that particular one. The second statement is left blank, but the definition that is given to us is definite or reasoning is given to us is definition of perpendicular lines. So now we have to go back and say, what is the definition of perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines are two intersecting lines, line segments are rays, and they form at a right angle. So since, by the definition, they form at a right angle, or they form at 90 degrees, we can say that angles K and angle L are right angles. All right, that's the statement, and the definition is given us in the reasoning. So since they are right angles, we can then say that they are... Um, angle K is congruent to angle L because they're both right angles we can go back and resort to that theorem and the reasoning is the right angles congruency theorem okay so I pose the question here on the bottom and it says suppose uh, you are given that angle K is congruent to angle L can you use the right angle congruency theorem to prove that angle K and angle L are right angles they're asking to explain. So if you look on the bottom here uh, on the two uh, red pieces of text, uh, the first statement up there is an if-then statement. So it's an if-then statement with conjunction with the theorem. So if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. That's part of the right angle congruency theorem. We can say that that statement is true. This second statement is a converse. The converse states that if two angles are congruent, then they are right angles. That statement is false because you could have two angles are congruent, but they're not right angles. So because of the converse is not true, we have to say no. We cannot prove that angle K and angle L are right angles just because they're congruent, because they could both be 30 degree angles. Yes, those two angles are congruent, but 30 degrees does not constitute a right angle. So that was why I'd say no. So we can say no because the converse statement is not true. Okay, so now we have uh, two theorems here, 2.4 and 2.5. Uh, the 2.4 theorem talks about congruent supplements theorem. That states that if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or to the congruent angles, then they are congruent. So the if-then statement that we have there here, it says if angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So here's what they're trying to say. 
supplementary, we know that this, their sums uh, equal 180 degrees. So that means that whatever the measurement of angle 1 is plus the measurement of angle 2 is going to equal 180 degrees. Coincide here, we're looking at angle 2 plus angle 3 is also going to equal 180 degrees. Since they're both equal to 180 degrees, we can set them equal to each other. Angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to angle 2 plus angle 3. Whoops. So now here, we notice that I have angle 2 on both sides of the equal sign. I could subtract angle 2 from both sides. Those cancel out. And now I get angle 1 is equal to angle 3. And that's why we can then say that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. Okay, same idea with uh, congruent complements theorem. It says that if two angles are complementary, which means they add up to 90 degrees, the same angle or to the congruent angles, then they are congruent. So they're saying that when angle 4 and angle 5 are complementary and angle 5 and angle 6 are also complementary, then 4 is congruent to 6. Same idea, same type of math. Okay. So here, they pose a question, is suppose angle A and angle B are complements, and angle A and angle C are complements, can angle B and angle C be supplements? They're asking us to explain. So again, complements are 90 degrees, and complements again are 90 degrees. So if we went here and said that angle A plus angle B equaled 90, supposing, and angle A plus angle C also equaled 90, we could then set them equal to each other and say that angle A plus angle B would be equal to angle A plus angle C. Subtracting angle A to both sides here, this is going to be angle B is equal to angle C. So here's the thing. They would have to be equal to each other. And the question that they're asking is, does angle B plus angle C equal 180 degrees all right they would have to, in order for this to be true both angle b and angle c would have to be 90 degrees and we know that because we have this uh, attached a that the our answer is no it, this cannot happen okay so b and c could not be supplements all right um All right, so we got this proof here. Uh, we're going to utilize uh, one of our uh, congruency, supplement or congruency complement theorems uh, to help us out. So here they're telling us that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplements. Angle 1 and angle 4 are supplements. The measurement at angle 2 equals 45 degrees. And they want us to prove that angle uh, 4, the measurement at angle 4, is also equal to 45 degrees. So first statement is given. Second statement is left blank, but the definition they're using is congruent supplements theorem. So looking up there, congruent supplements theorem, we we read it and it says suppose you know one and two are supplements, two and three are supplements, that means one and three are congruent. So we can then go about saying, okay, so if they told us that one and two are supple supplementary and one and four are supplementary since you could subtract angle one to both sides we could say that uh angle two is congruent to angle four all right by that theorem coincide if they're congruent that means their measurements are going to be equal which is the definition of congruent angles And then we had up on the top, the measurement of angle 2 is 45 degrees. That was given to us. And then we can then say if, well, since measurement of angle 2 is 45 and 2 is equal to 4, we can now say that the measurement of angle 4 also equals 45 degrees. And the reasoning is the, uh, the transitive period, transit, transitive property of equality. Excuse me. Okay, so 
we got a posture and we have theorem here they're gonna help us out uh, we're fairly familiar with uh, this postulate 12, the linear pair postulate, it says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Makes sense. So, like, if this was, like, say we called this line A, we called this, you know, ray X, Y. Line A is a straight angle that adds up to 180 degrees, and this these two angles um, encompass that. So, they're, so their sums would equal 180. So, angle 1 plus angle 2 would equal... 180 degrees. Theorem 2.6 talks about vertical angle congruency theorem. So when you have two intersecting lines, you are going to have uh, congruent angles uh, across from each other. So in this case, 1 and 3 are going to be congruent, and 2 and 4 are going to be congruent. Okay. And that'll help us out solving some problems. Another thing that we can identify is not only we have vertical angles here, but we also have different uh, pairs of linear pairs. So like 1 and 2 are a linear pair. We have 2 and 3 are a linear pair. We have 3 and 4 are a linear pair. And finally, we have 1 and 4. Our linear pair so that is another thing that'll help us out you know with different solving different problems so we have this diagram here to the right we have two intersecting lines so they told us that the measurement of angle 4 is 63 so we got 63 degrees right here they want us to find measurements of 1 and measurements of angle 2 so the easiest one to find is the measurement of angle 2 because they're vertical angles we know it's also going to be 63 degrees because of the same measurement to find the measurement of angle 1 we also now know that 1 and 4 are linear pairs so you just take 180 and subtract it by 63 which means that the measurement of angle 1 is going to equal 117 degrees okay Using the same diagram, we have another question here that says that the measurement of angle 3 is 121. They want us to find the remaining angles. So the easiest one to find is the vertical angle, which is the measurement of angle 1. That is also 121 degrees. All right, we know that these two are going to be the same because they're also vertical angles, but angle 3 is a linear pair to both 2 and 4 so we can say that the measurement of angle 2 and the measurement of angle 4 is going to equal whatever 180 subtracted by 121 is which is going to be 59 degrees and if you added 121 plus 59 you will get 180 degrees okay so here they want us to solve for x, but then they also want us to find the measurement of f, k, g, all right? So this is the information they give us. From this information, we know that it is a linear pair. So since it's a linear pair, I'm gonna take one angle, which is four x minus one, and add it to another angle, which is 113, and it's gonna equal 180 degrees. Combining like terms here and here, I get four x, plus 112 is equal to 180. Subtracting 112 to both sides, I got 4x is equal to 68. And when I divide everything by 4, x is going to equal 17. All right. Great that we found x, but this is also another piece of information that they want us to find. So here is where fkg is. So I'm going to take 4 times it by 17 and subtract it by 1. 4 times 17 is 68. Subtract it by 1 is 67 degrees. So the measurement of angle FKG equals 67 degrees. Finally, they want us to find, was it AEB? So AEB is right there. In order to find that, we need to find X. We have angle DEC that has a piece of information since they uh, both have the same variable. We also know that they are vertical angles. Since they are vertical angles, we can set them equal to each other. 
So from here, I can subtract 3x to both sides. I can also add 18 to both sides. This gets canceled. This gets canceled. I'm left with x on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm left with 22. All right? But I'm asked to find what AEB is. So the measurement of angle AEB is going to come from 4 times by 22 minus 18. 4 times 22 is 88. Subtract it by 18, that gets us 70 degrees. All right. One more proof for uh, this section in this chapter. So right here it says we are given angle 4 is a right angle, which they do. They give us that, that icon right there, so that makes sense. And they want us to prove that angle 2 in angle four are supplementary. So we can say that angle four is a right angle that's given to us. And then uh, the next step is they didn't give us a statement, but they gave us a definition. It says the definition of a right angle. Definition of a right angle is any measurement that is equal to um, 90 degrees. So we can say that the measurement of angle four equals 90 degrees degrees. All right, here they're telling us that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Well, if you look here, these two are vertical angles, so we can use the vertical angle congruency theorem. So that proves that. And since they are both uh, vertical angles, whatever their measurements be are also going to be equal. So the measurement of angle 2 is going to be equal to the measurement of angle 4. All right. And the reason that we can say that is the definition of congruent angles. And then the next step here that says that the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So if, they're t if you're telling you that the measurement of 2 is equal to 4, and 4 is equal to 90, we can also say that the measurement of angle 2 is equal to 90. That's the um, transitive property of inequalities. All right, then from here, we can then say what the last statement is that angle 2 and angle 4 are, in fact, supplementary because measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 4 equals 180 because this gives you 90 plus 90 which 90 plus 90 does give you 180 and that is being able to prove angle pair relationships hope this helps until next time